the uh, parallel session three, yeah, uh, room four, with a sustainable tourism uh, theme. Yeah, uh, I can see that uh, there are many international uh, participants as well as uh, a presenter in this uh, session. So welcome again to this session. <clears throat> Thank you to all uh, those attending uh, uh, the session today. Just a quick reminder for the presenter, please make sure that your camera and your microphone are working when presenting. And we want uh, to ensure that the presentation run as smoothly as possible. Okay. Uh, by the way, my name is Zulia Binti Abdul Hamid. I am a senior lecturer from University Technology Mara in uh, Puncha Alam campus. And uh, I am going to be the chairperson for this session. And my co-chair will be uh, Mr. Muhammad Shakir bin Zulkafli. <coughs> Shakir is here, yeah? Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. As per our agenda, we have uh, six presentation for today's session. Uh, I hope that and pretty sure that uh, most of you attending today will somehow relate to the topic presented and you uh, would uh, gain uh, different uh, insight from what you have listened today. Um, let, you re let me remind you that the presenter has, each presenter has 10 minutes presentation and uh, my co-chair will remind uh, each presenter if the time uh, the 10 minutes time is closed uh, is almost finished I mean yeah so as always if you have any uh, uh, during the 10 minutes presentation if you have any questions uh, please ask uh, after the presentation has been concluded or if you want, uh, you also have questions and you can put also in the chat box. And I will try to address uh, as many questions as possible throughout the session. Okay, so I hope uh, it's clear for the house rule uh, before we uh, start our session today. Okay. Okay, it's uh, 2.30. Okay, let's begin uh, our presentation. So the first uh, speaker for the presentation is me. Yeah, uh, I am going to present a topic on uh, exploring the influence of social media on sustainable indigenous tourism among Mahmeri community, community in Kerry Island, Malaysia. Okay, uh, first of all, let me try to put uh, the screen, share the screen. Present now. Okay, hold on.
uh, we cannot hear from you uh, Madam Julia uh, Hold on Can you see the, the slide now? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, I can start. Okay. Yes. Um, yes. As an introduction, um, tourism, uh, as we know, is a key driver for economic growth for many countries. Uh, basically, in the development of tourism research, information and communication technology has continued to be a vital topic. Uh, in this case, yeah, uh, for when we talk about information and communication technology, it will involve the usage of social media and internet tools. Uh, and this has created new chances and choices for people to communicate, communicate, but it has not been verified in the context of indigenous tourism. Uh, recently, many countries in the region, including Malaysia, has started to recognize the potential of indigenous tourism uh, in order to di diversify the tourism industry. Uh, in Malaysia, yeah, basically the uh, usage of internet is about uh, 12 hours per day. That was uh, not, uh, surveyed in 2017, but I believe now during the uh, uh, pandemic, the uh, average hours of uh, Malaysian spend in a day is more than 12 hours. Okay, when people start working at home and uh, uh, more people are confined, you know, they are not, uh, more and more people are uh, using the internet and uh, phone, yeah, mobile phone as well. And it has changes, uh, way of life, how people interact, since the development technology has uh, developed uh, and also the existence of uh, more uh, social media platforms. Social media platforms such as Facebook and Instagram are the most commonly used uh, social tools among the Malaysian. And uh, while uh, we found that there are some gaps in the contemporary li literature of the use of uh, social media among the local uh, indigenous community. So basically the research is uh, about um, examining the social media attributes that could influence uh, sustainable indigenous tourism and also to examine the direct effects of the social media attributes and sustainable indigenous tourism among Mahmeri community. In this study, okay, the, this research, um, we found out there are very little empirical evidence that has been used to examine the social media among the community, especially the indigenous uh, tourism or the indigenous community. Uh, limited uh, tourism studies on social media among these people. And also uh, Zeng and Gerritsen 2014 showed that research on social media in tourism for the community uh, is still in its infancy. Uh, more social media are concentrated on the consumer perspective. Um, it needs further uh, comprehensive inquiry uh, that relates to communities and economic benefits. So basically, uh, this uh, study uh, is is uh, comprehensive, basically involve uh, community-based tourism theory, uh, social theory, and uh, social media integrated theory. Uh, but for this uh, presentation, yeah, basically I will only concentrate on social media integrated theory. Okay, only a portion of the whole uh, research. And uh, for literature review, uh, um, we uh, also uh, try to define yeah, uh, social media, what is social media is actually a social interaction among people, which they 
create and share information and ideas in virtual communities and network. So utilizing digital media basically enable us to share information, generate content, collaborate, and interact with each other, which can be accessed from computer and any other mobile technologies. So basically, this is the social integrated theories that I've mentioned. Uh, so these theories uh, have several elements uh, on social media platforms, uh, including exposure, uh, feedback, uh, connection, and also sharing. Uh, advanced technology and availability of social media platform enhance the interactive process, which we can see that two or more uh, people easily engage and exchange the same level of information while communicating with each other. It also helps us to uh, express our thought uh, and present the data on the internet and also encourage uh, us to provide feedback, recommendation on, cert on certain uh, product that we purchase and also allow us to share information, exchange and inform information knowledge towards expo exposure process like we are doing now. Yeah, uh, So we can share information uh, through this platform. This uh, model also explains the overall effect of the capability of media platform and how quickly people become addicted and engage with social media platform for several hours. Although that uh, uh, the present study identifies social media integrated theory as one of the suitable theories to explain the role of social media, uh, not many researchers actually has fully explored it. That's why uh, this study is actually uh, to explore more uh, the, uh, the study on uh, social media, uh, social media especially uh, for uh, indigenous community and its relation towards uh, sustainable uh, tourism. You have okay. five minutes left. Okay. And uh, why you said that uh, these are some of the examples of the social medias that uh, people use whether it is on music on virtuals as well as on educational materials and uh, for social for indigenous people uh, they like to uh, uh, use the social media for them to have control on the how uh, to show their identities and uh, and uh, their culture they use mobile phones yeah to share what do they have and also uh, opportunities for them to transmit intergenerational uh, knowledge. And uh, between indigenous communities and also some important aspect of their indigenous culture. So uh, who are these people? Uh, Mahmuri lives in Kerry Island. Uh, basically, they are one of the tribes that must uh, much more advanced than others. Uh, they are rich in craft and skills. Uh, basically, uh, they use uh, wood carving. Uh, their carving has uh, very uh, valuable and may cost up into thousands of ringgits. They use social media to market their products. They have Mahmuri Cultural Village where they can sell their product there as well as using online. Uh, this study uh, used quantitative uh, research. Uh, gathering all the information through questionnaire. We have uh, 349 Mahmuri people for the sample size. Uh, we screen uh, these people and ended up we have um, 202 uh, usable um, uh, questionnaire. We analyzed through SPSS and finally through uh, PLS SEM uh, to evaluate exogenous and endogenous uh, contract relation. So in the end, the result demonstrated that social media has direct relationship with sustainable indigenous uh, tourism. Our finding also indicated that uh, they have positive and significant relationship between social media attributes and sustainable tourism destination. It reveals that social media plays uh, essential role in communicating, interacting and influence tourist behavior as well as uh, tourism development. 
Uh, it is important to note also social media helps uh, tourism operators and agent easily to communicate and interact as well as sharing information. But uh, bear in mind that uh, there's also uh, security issues such as privacy leakage, overload of information, credibility, sensationalism, and risk of damage has been identified uh, as a uh, negative effect on uh, tourism. Um, even though that the use of social media is uh, social media is not popular as information technology, but it has grown rapidly as it has been accepted as an uh, important tool and social media has uh, increasing tremendously yeah, because many tourists tend to use uh, internet to access travel info and plan their uh, travel uh, beforehand. So uh, we can use uh, social uh, media, social network photos, video sharing site, wikis, blogs, as well as online video, uh, sorry, uh, review sites uh, to check on certain destinations. And uh, we have uh, also know that uh, such channel has exponentially a growing importance within wider range of ecosystem of all the social media. And um, the growth of social media is also uh, allied with increasing ownership uh, level of uh, smartphones where a lot of people now uh, have uh, uh, handphones. And right now we are moving towards a 5G network and it's much more uh, what do you call important? Uh, uh, what do you call uh, important platforms of us sharing this uh, information? And uh, also, it's important to say that um, this uh, sustainable uh, tourism development uh, proposes a balanced approach for economic, social, cultural, and environmental development. And also uh, important to note also that social media is understood utilizing the tools for tourism development should be sustainable. This strategy will help the local community to avoid over tourism, mass tourism and negative word of mouth issues. So I think uh, it's uh, 10 minutes. Yes. Uh, uh, check here. Okay. Yes, okay. Yeah, uh, I think um, it's a very short um, uh, presentation, uh, very brief. And I think uh, if you have a question for my presentation, okay, uh, you can ask um, any question for the presentation. Uh, you can start. Uh, any question from the floor? Doctor, it was a very insightful uh, presentation. Well, I don't have questions, but I would love to read the full paper whenever the time permits, since we can't cover the, all the insights yeah. within 10 minutes. Yeah, true. So Mr. In, Mr. Case, yeah. in case if I come across any questions, we'll, we'll write to you because... Uh, because I don't have specific question right now because it's limited time for all of us. Yes, so, yes, Ruth. Right okay. Thank right. you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Madura. Uh, any more questions? I will take uh, one or two questions for before we proceed to the next presenter. Uh, okay, uh, okay, I think we proceed to the uh, next presenter. Uh, next presenter is, um, is the presenter here? Uh, from uh, Thailand, I believe, will be presenting about conceptual knowledge management. Uh, yeah, localization towards disruptive community-based tourism. Mr. Trishada? Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. Mr. Trishada. Uh, yeah, uh, without further ado, the floor is yours. Okay. Please. Okay. 
Okay, let me start. Good afternoon, chairperson and co-chair, lady and gentlemen. I'm Trishada Laukelnu. I'm a PhD candidate from Graduate School to of Tourism Management, Nida, Thailand. I'm so glad I have a, an honor to co-writing this paper with my advisor, assistant professor Dr. Wasida Bunyan Metapon. So today I would like to present my academic paper on the topic of local knowledge management a tool for community sustainability versus COVID-19 disruption. The presentation outline consists of seven parts as follow. For introduction, Thailand has uh, always been a popular tourist destination for foreigners. Unfortunately, the COVID-19 disease pandemic caused a lower in foreigner tourists in Thailand. Therefore, the government has begun a campaign uh, to encourage people to travel within their own nation. Uh, uh, as the tourist industry had yet to restore its strength, and, and community must also adjust to this scenario. And community-based tourism, or CBT, is a helpful tourism strategy by enhancing quality of life maintaining identity and local resource to ensure long-term sustainability but those things are about to disappear so km provide a tool for the existing issue of cbt even though most km is available at the medium large uh, medium to large scale organization with employee but there are many researchers suggest a new approach to km based on uh, community of practice procedure by bringing together people who are dealing with the same issue and allowing them to learn from each other km may aid destination recovery from a tourist crisis especially uh, COVID-19 pandemic caused severe disruption in tourist network. Knowledge management daily. The concept of KM has been defined in a variety of ways, including Rakko and more. On the other side, in Thailand, Pa Suk Yud offer a comparison KM uh, with mackerel, which contain three key elements. Uh, first, Macaleo header deciding which direction knowledge. And second, central Macaleo trunk is the learning exchange. And finally, the tail is knowledge where how we systematic, system, systematically manage and distribute information. Many experts believe that KM may benefit one cell improvement as well as effectiveness, operational growth, and improving the organization. However, there are still aspects missing from KM ideas, such as creating a good communication route and evaluate, evaluating individual rules, disseminate information which is critical for managing the body of information that react to the context of CBT due to the community limit competition in knowledge transfer since KM has to do in uh, with individual learning and dynamic up to the societal level. Knowledge management community sustain, uh, sustainability. CBT has a uh, number of benefits, but someone, uh, some researchers have discovered the certain parts of the community traditional custom break, government regulations such as restricting the ability to utilize the property the, that the group received from their ancestor via the ap application of government policy and uh, traditional knowledge in the community. Furthermore, because the community new generation is sensitive to external social trend and unwilling to learn from their forefathers, certain uh, handicraft have been loose uh, to the community cultural legacy due to a lack of technical advancement. Besides, KM is one of the most hotly debated topic in particular tacit knowledge management in important for uh, community 
effective and efficient day-to-day -day operation and consequently community performance would increase to preserve uh, the cultural knowledge of community individual in the region must work together to take effort to give knowledge with uniqueness or learn to adapt and be resilient in society. Knowledge management, emerging and critical situation. KM has become a critical procedure in many sectors to stay afloat in today. Dangerous corporate as the current COVID-19 pandemic has revealed. However, the COVID-19 has influenced CBT. It is well, difficult to control. Yeah. Yes, uh, control a pandemic with in a ship to through an effectiveness and efficiency KM process in academic, uh, in pandemic is critical in managing the spread of the pandemic as success of, those, of this decision in determ determined by capacity to generate, share, gather, transmit, and elaboration uh, information. Which KM concept has procedure would comfort visitor to visit uh, the community by building trust in them if they enough information. Local knowledge management process for sustainability in, de in developing local capital uh, community can gain a uh, competitive advantage by transmitting information to the next, genera next generation to uh, in the community or visitor. KM is a significant predictor of long-term CBT and it may be reinforced by established a systematic KM platform in uh, many parts of community in response uh, to the disruptive circumstance. For example, KM process of Yamasaki consists of uh, you un, uh, first and in analyze and next and analyze data and next knowledge information and uh, Finally, wisdom. The finding address the gap in KM approach to, uh, to CBT apparent limit, limitation is non existent here of sustainability contribute that have been uh, based on empirical data. The Ateri model in figure demonstrate the uh, summary of KM concept and process which can imply adopt into localization of uh, for, com, uh, for community sustainability. Uh, this is complete uh, community sustainability through a careful selection of concept. Whereas in this uh, study, divide into a step following. Uh, first, go setting by exhibit the community destination as a compact for success and in step to the com community mass uh, in in team information is clearly identified, share go with a plan. Then, uh, then knowledge survey collecting investigate investigating both explicit and tacit knowledge, which have a various of knowledge. Uh, and next is to uh, select issue by uh, identifying risk concern, ordering significant, and when local are uh, ordering. When uh, local are ordering of significant issue next, must correct systematic data and choosing the right communication uh, channel and uh, the process transfer of knowledge. And finally, measuring to success is a tool for evaluate, evaluating performance in many sectors of organization management, conclusion and implication. Uh, KM community understand how to manage this knowledge. KM practitioner and tourism expert can, can use a guide to build a KM and sharing knowledge to community tourists. This paper, uh, finally, this paper recommend a strategic focus on motor, modality uh, and component of KM, as well as the concept KM and integrate sustainability and review. Uh, or uh, this or reference in just writing this article. Thank you for your attention. I'm a PhD candidate at the Graduate School of Tourism Management, NIDA, 
Thailand. Here is my advisor assistant, Professor Dr. Wasida Bunyan Metapod. We are current emphasize uh, research into the area of local management of community sustainable. If anyone would like to conduct their uh, further research in the field with us, please feel free to contact us in our email. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, doctor, we can't hear you. Doctor, we cannot hear. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Uh, th uh, thank you, Trishada, uh, for presenting uh, on the topic of local knowledge management. Uh, we will now take some questions from the attendees on the presentation. Please introduce yourself first before asking your question. Um, maybe I can ask uh, one question uh, to Trishada. Okay, in yes. your opinion, yeah, Trishada, in your opinion, how would you, uh, as of now, how would you uh, rate the success of uh, community-based tourism in Thailand? Um, how popular my, is In my opinion? Yeah. Yes. In, in in my opinion, uh, what is a key success in Thailand? Yes. CBT, yeah. Of local, uh, yes. Um, I think uh, the key success is participation of community uh, process in every process uh, from management of CBT. Okay. Okay, all right. Besides uh, participation, knowledge, and so forth, like you have mentioned, yeah, because there are many other attractions in Thailand as well. Okay, all right. Uh, any more questions from the floor about CBT? Okay, uh, if there's no question, thank you again, uh, Trishada. For your uh, nice presentation. Uh, up next, we have the second presenter, third presenter, uh, Miss Silverina is not uh, going to present. I think Nurul Shafizatul and Atika Viana is it will present on behalf of uh, Miss Silverina and their topic will be resilient concept in investigating the impact of COVID-19 to local tour guides in Kota Kinabalu. Okay, uh, let's begin your presentation and uh, you have 10 minutes. Uh, okay, that's yours. I will begin. Uh, Assalamualaikum and very good evening. My name is Nurul Shabizatul Nasliya Binti Abidin and my fellow presenter name is Atika Biana Anthony. Uh, so today we are going to present our paper titled Resilient Concept in Investigating the Impact of COVID-19 to, to uh, Local Tour Guides in Kota Kinabalu Sabah. So since last, since last year, the whole world was shocked when a new pandemic was announced and it, it hit globally that forced a lot of companies to shut their business as almost all countries announced um, total lockdown to control the virus from spreading. So in Malaysia, the first case was detected on January 2020 and on March 2020, Sabah reported its uh, COVID-19 case. Uh, as the tourism industry has always been the first to get affected, it was no different to the state of Sabah. 
Uh, on 7 February 2020, Sabah State Federal has released an official letter uh, on temporarily halting any direct uh, flights from China and tourists who, who has visited China who are not allowed to enter Sabah. So after a spike in COVID-19 case, former Prime Minister Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin announced a movement control order, order MCO on 18 March 2020. So after MCO was imposed, uh, movement and mass assembly were prohibited. All industry, local, federal are closed. Uh, Malaysian barred from leaving the country and restrictions uh, on the entry of non-Malaysian uh, into the country. So, according to Tan Kok Liang, the president of the Federation of Asian uh, Travel Association, FATA, said because of COVID-19, majority of uh, travel agencies face problem because of total booking cancellation and having to pay full refund to customers. So, this article clippings uh, show how COVID-19 affected Sabah. This pandemic has severely shaken our tourism industry, especially uh, airline services, hotels, and tour guides. So in January 2020, Kota Kinabalu Interna International Airport has welcomed the, the first China chartered flight into Sabah, Lung Air. Yet, due to travel ban, all flights from China to Sabah suspended. So, because of there is no to, uh, commitment, uh, the tour guides are losing job. Some, uh, some of the tour guides started to find part-time jobs such as babysitter, maid, and even cleaner. Hotel also struggling to keep their business, uh, especially in Kota Kinabalu, the tourist hotspot destination. Uh, so next, uh, this graph show the arrival, uh, the tourist arrival in Sabah from 2016 to 2020. As the tourist arrival in 2016 is uh, steadily increasing in 2019, the trend shows a very significant uh, difference of number of tourist arrival in 2019 and 2020. The total of Sabah tourist arrival dramatically decreased in 2020 and 2021. This is the biggest downfall in the Sabah tourism industry. Furthermore, the insufficient budget allocation for tourism sector is not helping the industry players. Because of deficit uh, cash flow, two agencies were expected to retrench their workers in large numbers. Thus, our study is to investigate the impact of COVID-19 outbreaks towards local tour guides in Sabah and to determine the factors of their resilience. Next is the literature review. Resilience uh, uh, was defined as the capacity to deal with, the cha with change and continue to develop, according to Stockholm uh, Resilience Center 2020. Meredith Shelburne Gallet et al. 2011 has revived a broad literature on resilience and distinguished that past literature has presented 104 definitions of the concept. Resilience is vital to comprehend because it can serve as defending measure in the face of extreme, stre extreme stress, trauma and adversity. Green et al. 2014. So for... COVID-19, on January 7, a novel coronavirus originally abbreviated as 2019 and coped by the WHO, World Health Organization, who uh, was identified from the throat swab sample of our patients. This pathogen let, uh, was later renamed as Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2, SARS-CoV-2 by the coronavirus study group and the disease was named coronavirus disease 2019. Uh, so next, another five uh, for our methodology, the question is we are using is electronically administered 
questionnaire that includes both close-ended question and short essay. The population is local to guides in Sabah, Malaysia. So our target population is estimated 700 to 800 local to guides who work in Kota Kinabalu. Lastly, the sampling populations, uh, a total of tour guides who are currently working and affiliated with Sabah Tour Guide Association, STGA, and the Sabah Native Registered Tour Guide Association. So next, I will pass to Tika Vena. Thank you, Nurul. So for the findings, majority of our respondents are male and the majority age is from 20 to 25 years old and 110 of them are still single. So for the number of dependents, um, 93 of them are working to provide themselves and the rest are working to provide themselves and their family. For the educational level, majority of them are diploma and degree holders. So the impact of the COVID-19 outbreaks towards the local tour guide. The, there are three employment types. Uh, the first one is full-time. Um, second one is part-time tour guide and the third one is freelancer tour guide. How does the COVID-19 affect them? So majority of them were asked to get leave by their company and 48 of them are terminated from service and 46 of them are receiving pay cut. What do they do to provide themselves and their family for the, at the moment? Uh, 104 of them are working on their own and 49 of them are still working but um, receiving pay cut salary. There are four uh, factors of local tour guides resilient towards COVID-19 outbreaks. There are four. First is risk propensity. Second is self-directed learning. The third one is emotional awareness. And the last one is mindset. So... Um, the result shows that um, our respondents are more to agreeing with the item within. The first item is risk propensity. They are willing to take risks involve, by involving themselves in other business career and have the courage to deal with possible risk to their jobs. And also they're willing to take risks in investing on small businesses. The second one is they are, they are interested in self-directed learning. They also... Um, agree that self-directed learning helps them to learn more about their own interests and discover new skills. The third item is they agree that they use self-directed learning to learn various skills via multiple sources such as internet browsing and watching tutorials on YouTube. The third um, factor is they are aware that as a tour guide, they rely a lot on international um, tourists and also they're aware that the tourism business is vulnerable they also experience uh, getting pay cut for the last factors is mindset they believe that they're being optimist while facing challenges also having optimistic mind helps them to curve with negative effect of stress and those adaptation towards challenges also they believe that the tourism industry will recover fast in few months the implication particularly this um, study will beneficial in contribute into in contribution to the literature on resilience in face of any event that has an influence on in the entire world practically uh, it will give benefit to any tour operation in better managing their human capital while planning for future event um, similar to COVID-19. For the limitation, we only um, focus on the local tour guide who's working in Tukota Kinabalu that is affiliated and working under Sabah Tourism Guide Association and Sabah Native Registered Tourist Guide Association. For the conclusion, yes, this COVID-19 really affected our local tour guide, but it also shows that they are resilient towards the current situation and it is good that the government had started a domestic tourism in certain status uh, such as Langkawi um, and hope this will mitigate uh, the impact of the tour guide job in some direction. However, we couldn't uh, deny that the um, deny that the real recovery will only possible if the international tourism returns. So while waiting for them, we were hoping that our local tour guides will keep their spirits up and they can manage their financial and life effectively. That's all from us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone Thank have you. any question? Thank you to Nurul and Atika Viana for the nice presentation. Um,
We'll take now some uh, questions from you. If, uh, should there be any question? You might also uh, put your question in the chat box if you wish. No question? Okay, I have one question. Yeah. Um, as uh, we are moving towards the endemic uh, phase, by end of November, uh, sorry, October, uh, even though that we have a lot of, still a lot of uh, COVID-19 cases, uh, and do you think that Sabah will follow uh, soon, uh, like Langkawi, uh, providing the travel bubble? Uh, but for Langkawi itself now, uh, if they travel by air, uh, tourists traveling by air, they don't have to use uh, local tour operators. But if they are traveling by land, they must use tour operators. What do you think about the, uh, the situation uh, in Langkawi? Would, what about in Sabah? Would baby travel bubble will, uh, that will also uh, revive? You know, the re revival of the local tour operators' uh, businesses. Thank you for the question. I will yeah. answer that question. So recently I um, read in the news that actually Sabah and Singapore has the plan to do a bubble, travel a bubble, but it was... Um, it was like because of the cases um, keep on increasing, increasing day by day, so they postponed it. So I think um, right now we just have to wait for the uh, vaccination rate to reach eighty percent, so that we can um, we can uh, plan a uh, plan about it. Yeah, but it's a good it's a it's a good thing that the um, tourism bubble. Uh, be open in Sabah because it will help a lot of local tour guides. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for Thank the. Uh, uh, Sabrina, you want to answer? <laughs> no. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Hope you're doing well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because I thought that you co the paper co co uh, authored the paper. Maybe you have the inside the. Uh, yeah. 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 I actually I very agree with Atika because um, we're really looking forward for the travel bubble between Singapore and Sabah. Unfortunately, they have to stop it for a while. But I heard from the ministry that um, they, are, they are going to launch it very soon. So, yeah, finger crossed, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, yeah, we can go to fly to Sabah again. And uh -huh. right. so I, I think the, the domestic tourism is very good because last time when we still have a lot of um, cases, once they open the resort, it's full. People are eager to um, to travel. I call it, um, what do you call it? The revenge travel. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone will have this revenge. Yeah. The same happening here in, in, in the greater KL, yeah? Yeah, everyone. Right. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Doctor. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, uh, can you proceed to the next presenter? Uh, is the presenter here, uh, Jin Peng Ji? Yes. Okay, all right. Okay, uh, your presentation will be on firm induced tourist post COVID 19, the impact of firm to promote tourism destination. Okay, such a nice uh, topic. So uh, please welcome uh, to, uh, to the floor and, and present. Your, okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay, you may start now. Yeah, you can start now. I can share my screen. Sorry. Sorry, doctor, I can't hear your voice and I can share my screen now.
what's the reason now? At the bottom, the one, one, two, three, four, five, the first uh, button from the left. Yes, but I can't. They say your browser can't share your screen. Can you screenshot it? That, that, that means after you click the present now, you can't click the, your entire screen or a, a window, is it? Can create and rejoin. Are you using uh, Mac actually? Uh, sorry, Doctor. Can I ask my friend to uh help me show my PowerPoint for you? Okay. Thank you. Jin Ping, do you want to uh, do it later? And we have a uh, next presenter present instead. Okay. Yeah. yeah well, while you are uh, doing it. Yeah. Okay. Thank All right. You. Okay. I will come back to you. Okay. All right. Um, can we proceed to the uh, next presenter? Cheku Najwa Husna, Cheku Aris. Yes. Yes, a topic of uh, customer retention at Five Star Hotel in Penang, the relationship between service quality and customer satisfaction. Okay. Thank you. Please proceed. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Wait, I share my slide first. Can you see my slide on your screen? Yes. Okay, you may start okay. now. Yeah, you can start okay, now. Thank you. Okay, assalamualaikum and good afternoon to chairperson and co-chairperson and other presenter. My name is uh, Cik Kuno Josna, uh, Cik Kuno Harris, and today I'm going to be talking about my study, uh, which is customer retention at Five Star Hotel in Penang. Uh, the relationship between service quality and customer satisfaction. Without overdue, I will continue with the next slide. Okay, so for today, I'm going to look at uh, introduction of the research, uh, uh, literature review, methodology, result and discussion, and finally uh, is the conclusion. Okay, so for the first is uh, introduction. So the Malaysian service industry has developed in the last two decades uh, because of the special attention paid by the Malaysian government in this specific field. So the hotel industry uh, as a full service sector has emerged and can be considered as uh, one of the most significant revenue generating sector in Malaysia. So to achieve service quality uh, satisfaction as well as retention of the customer hotel establishment, uh, attempt to wow their guests with competitive differentiation and offering highest level of service quality. So five-star hotel known with consistency in terms of aspect, especially in service quality. So from the way guests are welcome uh, to the way the dinner table is arranged. Every time they visit, they can expect uh, the same excellent level of service delivery. So service quality is the main factor to separate hotel player from rival and build a loyal customer base uh, in normal circumstances. However, uh, with uh, the introduction of pandemic throughout the world, uh, everything starting to fall apart. 
there is no justification for the global disruption resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic, as previously mentioned. Hotel industry were divested with lockdown and travel res restrictions from all over the world. So the challenge created by COVID-19 affect almost uh, every component of activity uh, in a hotel, from room occupancy to staffing plan, as well as the provision of food and beverage. So this pandemic, even after uh, the removal of travel bans and area lockdown has uh, the potential to have a far-reaching impact on the industry. So customer satisfaction is very important uh, and the contrast between stagnation and development may be important for the whole industry service. The importance uh, of this analysis uh, for decision making in the whole industry is to consider the variable that affect customer satisfaction. So this is uh, the literature review about hotel industry in Malaysia, including service, quality, uh, customer satisfaction, and customer retention uh, were defined. Okay, so this is the conceptual framework. There, are, there is four hypotheses were developed uh, for this study. The first hypothesis is the relationship between service quality and uh, customer retention. The second one is the relationship between service quality and customer uh, satisfaction and the third one is a relationship between customer satisfaction and customer retention and the last hypothesis is uh, there is an effect of customer satisfaction as a mediator in the relationship between service quality and customer retention okay so in this analysis the the descriptive research was used because uh, because the connection between the variable needs uh, to be checked and it's refer one of the approach uh, to analyze or have a better image of the hypothesis connected and descriptive analysis will approach with the intention of naming uh, things or classifying the future of things. For the purpose, uh, data was collected and the unit analysis uh, is individual uh, domestic tourists uh, who have stayed in five-star hotel in Penang during pandemic uh, COVID-19. So the research used a sample size of 302, which is a domestic tourist who travel into Penang. So the location has to be chosen uh, because of the attraction of its soft sandy beaches and fondly regarded uh, as the food capital of Malaysian catch eye uh, of the tourists. So the research apply uh, the quantitative research, uh, quantitative research procedure are inquiring about uh, in a plan process of inquiry of phenomena and their relationship strategy uh, for handling number and anything uh, that is quantifiable. A simple random uh, sampling technique uh, has been used uh, in this research. Simple random uh, sampling is perhaps the most basic type uh, of sampling in which every member of population has the probability being included in the sample and all feasible uh, sample of a given site have the same ch chance of being selected. For the questionnaire, an invitation treat was given by Google Form and a short message uh, were given to respondent and brief them about the study intent and then an invitation message uh, to the participant in the current research uh, as a respondent and a guide uh, to the online questionnaire were sent to all uh, media social platforms. Uh, in addition, the questionnaire was created, uh, created by adapting questions from previous research. We we'll have another five minutes. Okay, for result and discussion, uh, so based on the research objective, uh, there is a significant effect between service quality and customer uh, satisfaction. So according to previous researcher, uh, there is a significant link between service quality and customer retention in the industry based on their research. Okay, now I would like to move on to research objective two. So there is a significant effect between service quality and customer satisfaction. So previous researchers shown that service quality has a positive impact on customer retention uh, based on their research. So moving now to research objective three. Okay, so there is a significant effect uh, between service quality and customer satisfaction. Uh, researcher uh, showed a quiet consistently that the self evidence for business to cultivate and maintain positive relationship with their customer to encourage not only repeat purchases but also customer retention. And the last one uh, is 
uh, regarding finding and discussion, research objective four, customer satisfaction maintain the relationship between uh, service quality and customer retention are supported. Researcher has shown a uh, quite consequently that uh, service quality has a good impact uh, on customer satisfaction, which lead to increased uh, customer retention. Okay, so moving to the last slide, uh, as we know that Five Star Hotel is known for its services among its workers because of training uh, provided to ensure that guests receive excellent service while staying there. However, all services and facilities given by the Five Star Hotel are reduced because, uh, because of the pandemic, including the amenities uh, serviced by personnel sending luggage to the room, dining in uh, the restaurant, and uh, many more. When it comes to the circumstance, the customer will be dissatisfied during their stay and will believe that their money was wasted open to the services uh, they received. To summarize the main point of my presentation, the statistical analysis revealed that there is influence of service quality on customer satisfaction and retention, as well as a mediating influence of customer satisfaction. Furthermore, a good and well-built uh, service quality can lead uh, to customer satisfaction, which can lead to increased customer retention. So the study design provides strength uh, despite some interesting findings. Uh, this research uh, contribute to both academic and business topic. Okay, so we are coming to the end of my presentation. So I'll, I'll just like to thank you for listening. That's bring us to the end of my presentation. Thank you. Okay, uh, that's the end of the presentation. Any question for for this uh, presenter? One question. Just one question, uh, Cik Najwa. Uh, how many yes. five-star hotel? How many five-star hotels for your the sample? Five oh, uh, around uh, twenty uh, five-star hotel in Penang. In in Penang and also in the mainland. Ah uh, yes. Oh, okay. Any any specific uh, uh, criteria uh, for the hotels uh, besides the five-star? Is it uh, beach hotels? Uh, or all five five star hotels, or oh, there is no specific uh, about the hotel, but uh, there there is a five star hotel uh, in the study. So okay. maybe it could be beach hotel, city hotels. Yes, right. yes, exactly. right. Thank you. Okay, welcome. Any any more question? Okay, uh, we proceed to the next uh, presentation. Uh, is uh, Ms. Jinping, are you ready or not yet? You want to pre present now? Yes. Okay, all right. Okay, you can proceed uh, with your presentation. Yeah. Okay. Okay, you may start now. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. My name is, is Jin Ping. I am a graduated student and GSTM NIDA. Dr. Wesida is my supervisor. My paper is about fume-induced tourists post-COVID-19, the impact of fume to promote a tourist destination. And you say this article including six parts. The introduction contains five parts, background, problem statement, research gap, objectives, and benefits. We experienced COVID-19 together. 
all walks of life are deeply affected by COVID-19, especially the tourism industry. Visitors were restricted to their home, watching movies and home has become the safe and convenient way for people to entertain themselves. themselves. Film-induced tourism ha has in emerged in recent years, especially in this period. It's constantly changed the, the tourism destination and tourist behavior. According to research, most of studies are related to the influence and development program. While a limited study focused on the tourist behavior motivation to the film-induced tourist destination post-COVID-19, the aims of these studies are to investigate the behavior and the characteristics of film-induced tourists post-COVID-19 and the factors affecting our tourist behavior motivation to film-induced tourist destination. The findings will serve as as guideline for the associated administrators, tourism operators, tourism planners to professionally promote the film induced tourist destination development. Part two is about the impact of COVID 19 on global tourism. This January, UNWTO released the international tourism in 2020 back to the level of 30 years ago. You can see from those data, they all pervade. At the same time, the behavior of tourists also changed. People will not try to travel easily. The destination will be closer. Young people will be the main part of tourists. The natural and rural tour tourism will be more popular. Tourists will pay more attention to travel healthy and safety. Cancellation policies and last minute booking will increase than ever. Next part is about tourism recovery and development post COVID-19. The recovery and development strategies can be divided into four categories. Policy makers should formulate supporting policies to help tourism industry. Tourists companies should adjust their business objectives and strategies according to their actual condition. Tourists attractions should control the number of tourists. Prepare for epidemic prevention in advance and open scenic spots in an orderly manner. And travelers should establish safety, safety awareness, protect themselves, and cooperate with government. Part four is about fume-induced tourism. Fume-induced tourism is one of is one of the form, forms of cultural tourism. It refers to the activities in which tourists travel to the destination because they see information about tourist destination in movies, television works, videos, and so on. Film induced tour tourists is triggered by film and television dramas. The impact of film and film induced tourism on tourist destination is reflected in the image of tourists' destination, economical development, cult cultural communication, local people's life, infrastructure, and environment. You can say I need some positive and negative influences here. So the impact of film and film-induced tourism is a double-edged sword. The motivation of human-induced tourism refers to the willingness of tourists to see a certain thing in film and television works and hope to visit or experience the specific tourist destination or attraction. When tourists choose a tourist destination, they are often affected by expectations constructed and maintained by non-tourism factors such as movies, television works, radios, and others. Movies can indeed 
affect the audience perception of the forming location and stimulate the interest and desire to the forming location. The pruning factors such as natural scenery, climate environment, and the spatial culture state in the film don't dominate the formulation of the motivation of film induced tourists. However, the influence of pushing factor in is not obvious. Film induced tourists have particularities in tourism motivation, destination selection, information collection channels, certification, and demographical. The main motivation of film induced tourists is to confirm whether the pictures in film are consistent with reality. They often choose places or attractions that appear in film and television works. The sources and channels for them to obtain tourism information are diversified. Tourists who have a strong emotional connection with the movie tend to express higher satisfaction with the travel experience. The age distribution tends to be younger. The proportion of them is slightly more women than men is about six to four. Part five, I want to share my findings with you. You can see there are seven uh, development strategy for film induced tourist destination. For healthy and safety first, pay attention to the result of film works, build a spe specific high quality careers, integrate science and technology into tourism, use film and television works to enrich the cultural connotation, pay attention to the psychology needs of film induced tourists select film and television works to award shaping negative images. You have Let's two more minutes. Conclusion. This article researches the impact of COVID-19 on global tourism, tourism recovery and development post-COVID-19. The definition of film induced tourism, the impact of film and film induced tourism to tourist destination, the impact of film related factor on tourist behavior, motivation and behavior and the characteristics of film induced tourists and the seven de development strategy for film induced tourist destination. The information in this study can be used as a cornerstone for future research development and academic services projects also is associated with future research actions that will increase the probability to produce the viable results and the practical concepts of tourist destination to develop film induced tourism. For practice, it can be used to stimulate tourists' expectation, mental quality, violence, improve violence, improve visitors' satisfaction, and develop tourist loyalty. For future study, I recommend to examine the relationship between expectation and satisfaction of film induced tourist destination and other factors post COVID-19. Okay, that's all my presentation. Thank you for your watching and listening. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, uh, thank you, Ms. Jinping for your presentation. Okay. Thank uh, you. Yes. Is there any um, question for her regarding her presentation? Okay, uh, another question from me. Are you from China? Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, for film induced tourism, is there any mm -hmm. uh, favorite favorite uh, destination in China that uh, always been yeah the most the in most China. famous yeah destination that me people make film in China? Yeah, in China. Uh, such as Hendian World Studio. It's uh, a place for uh, forming firm or movies or um, TV shows they forming in this area. But uh, they don't, uh, some tourists want to uh, visit there. So, 
at the beginning, there is not a uh, tourist tourist destination, but now it's, it's, it is the most famous in China. Uh, I'm sorry, where is the place again? Which region? Uh, what is the name? Hendian World Studio. Oh, okay, okay. It's a studio. It's like uh, maybe Hollywood where people make yeah. films. Yes. Oh, okay. And All maybe right. Disney Park in Shanghai is also the typical uh, film industry. Uh, oh, okay. All right. Thank you for the information. Thank you. All right. Thank you for the question. Yeah. Any any more question for for Ms. Jinping? Okay. Uh, if not, we proceed to the last presentation for today. Uh, presentation from Mr. Madura Tivanka uh, on economic sustainability in safari tourism in Southeast Asia. The case of Minaria National Park, Sri Lanka. Please welcome, Ms. Mr. Madura. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. I'm going okay. to share the screen. Can you see the screen, doctor? Yes, yes, yes. yes. It's clear, okay. yeah. Right. Just give me one minute. Is it in the full screen? Uh, yeah. I don't, yeah, I think so, yeah. Or oh, you want to... I have clicked the full screen. Is it in the full screen now? Oh, yeah, I think yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Uh, the chair and the co-chair, thank you for the opportunity and my dear participants who have presented uh, before me. So the uh, the topic is, of course, uh, which I'm going to present today is uh, the economic sustainability in uh, safari tourism, uh, which is a case study for the Mineria National Park in Sri Lanka. So uh, if I move forward... My name is Dr. Madhura Tivanka. Well, I'm working for the Edith Cowan University Sri Lanka campus. And this research, of course, uh, is a collaboration between Professor Renuka Herat in Kalani University, Sri Lanka, uh, Professor Sara Gardner in Griffith University, and one of your keynote speaker yesterday, who is uh, Professor Noel Scott. So this is a collaboration research activity that we have done in last year and this year as well. So what I'm going to cover today is... Uh, uh, we'll be discussing about the uh, the basics, the, the reason behind why we have done this research. And I will explain about the problem that we have come across to do this research and what kind of a methodology I have followed and the findings. Well, this is the time plan that we uh, went through with this particular research. So we have started the, the initiation project uh, last year, of course, 2020. And then um, August only we have... Uh, uh, completed the final research article even. So we have submitted the extended abstract for this research conference and we are looking forward to publish uh, by next year, beginning. So the Sri Lanka tourism is one of the fastest growing industry to, uh, in Sri Lanka and it is one of the key economic pillar to the Sri Lankan uh, industry as well. So that is one of the major tourism income earner, foreign income earner. Uh, for the economy. So if I talk about the growing appeal, uh, prior to the 2019, uh, we were generating a um, total of 4.4 US dollars in billions. And in 2019, we have generated the US dollars billion 3.7. However, unfortunately, we came across an, a terrorist attack in 2019. And then in 2020, we are facing to the, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic pressure. However, uh, the Sri Lankan government has targeted uh, 6 million tourist arrivals by 2025 and uh, yielding of uh, US dollars 10 billion. And right now, prior to the COVID-19, we were employing nearly 400,000 employees in this industry. And uh, many 
many uh, worldwide recognizers have in, recognized the Sri Lanka tourism as as one of the best place to visit. The recent recognition was from the Lonely Planet, which recognized as one of the best destination to visit uh, in the Indian Ocean. So, in addition to that, we have recognized so many. We have been recognized by so many international recognizers as well. So the 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 major domain that we have selected for this research is the wildlife tourism in Sri Lanka. If I talk about the wildlife tourism in Sri Lanka, uh, we were generating nearly uh, in Sri Lankan rupees. We were generating nearly two thousand millions from the wildlife tourism activities in Sri Lanka. So Sri Lanka tourism is attracting international tourists uh, basically for the wildlife tourism because of the unique characteristics that we were uh, included in the tourism activities. So we are having 26 national parks and nearly 400 uh, spaces were identified which are very unique to the Sri Lankan uh, wildlife. Uh, however, in Sri Lankan context, it is evident that the wildlife tour operators in Sri Lanka are driving the business activities to a crisis because of the lack of economic sustainability. Uh, and then uh, the, the lacking part of this economic sustainability, uh, making them less competitive and uh, generating uh, survival issues in the long term due to this uh, lacking part of the economic sustainable practices by the wildlife operators. Though we were generating a good revenue and uh, though we have gained a very good competitive status, this lacking part we have recognized that it's uh, leading to a less competitive status. So to identify the most suitable economic sustainable practice, we have done a research using a case study approach the case study approach was done to the Minaria National Park. Uh, Minaria National Park is established in 1997 and one of the world famous national park for the wildlife gatherings in Sri Lanka. Park is located in the middle of the island as you can see. If you can see the screen somewhere here, the Minaria National Park is located. I have added the detailed map as well. Minaria National Park is always competing with the other national parks. Uh, but the uh, the key characteristic, which is the elephant gathering, is very very unique to the Minaria National Park, and uh, that is why we have selected uh, the Minaria National Park for this case study because the highest number of uh, visitors are recorded in uh, as a national park in Sri Lanka is the Minaria, and uh, one of the highest revenue generator also the Minaria National Park for the elephants. Now. Let me to show you a few seconds about the Minaria National Park, if permits. Minaria Park was originally declared a wildlife sanctuary as far back as 1938. In August of 1997, it was then declared... Is it a video? Uh, doctor, can you see the video or what? Oh, no. Okay, think... then let's forget about it. Can you see the screen? Now, I assume that you can see the screen that the, this yeah. Mineria Lake is the major attraction where you can experience more than 400 wildlife, wild elements in the Mineria National Park in a given day. Now, the problem, of course, as I have mentioned, although the, the, the numbers are very attractive, numbers are performing very well, uh, as I have mentioned... Doctor, the economics... it, doctor your screen is static. And... <laughs> Your screen, your screen are not moving. Hold on. Doctor, what about now? Are you looking at the problem statement slide? No, no. It's, it's on the, only on the first slide. Yes. Okay. What about now? Okay, can you share the screen again? Hold on. I'm sharing yeah. the screen again. Yeah. Can you see the screen now? Oh, yes. Okay, right. 
so the problem okay. of course that i have identified is uh, that i have as i have mentioned the key problem is the lacking part of the economic sustainable activities by these two operators so if they going to maintain in this lacking part we have been identified that the min- the wildlife tourism activities will be losing its competitive status in very soon so we have done this research for the minneria national park as i mentioned uh, targeting the wildlife operators in uh, in sri lanka so the research methodology uh, the the key research aims was to identify the most suitable and accepted uh, economic sustainability business model for the two operators in sri lanka uh, so we have redeveloped one of the business model that they have applied by collecting the data set rather than proposing a new one what we had done was we have redeveloped their existing business model with the most suitable elements that they could go ahead uh, in order to drive their business for the economic sustainability so as i mentioned i hope you know when it comes to the sustainability there are three major elements that is the economic sustainability social and environmental sustainability but the social aspect and the environmental aspects won't be able to achieve if the the two operator is not successful with the economic sustainability so that is why we have given now a priority uh, to drive them for the economic sustainability if they can anchor themselves with the proper economic sustainability of course they will be able to achieve the social and environmental sustainability in all these national parks as a two operator so to to redevelop or to identify the existing status the model that we have applied for them was the osterwelders business model canvas and we have uh, we have applied the business model canvas to figure it out what kind of a business model that they are right now following well fortunately and very interestingly the business model that they are right now following is same as the osterwelders business model canvas however their understanding and their capacity to drive the economic sustainability is very low so we have collected the data set using this research methodology uh, it was a case study and then we have gathered the data set using qualitative basis this for, this is a qualitative research so we have we have analyzed the data set uh, using the coding and we have uh, we have applied the in vivo for the coding purpose and this is the key findings that we have come across so if i give you a very summarized uh, version of what we have come across in this research uh, for uh, very interestingly uh, the the strategic intention the the expectation to redevelop the strategic intention of what they are doing is 56% they are they are really wanted to de- define and redevelop their strategic in- in- intervention as a tourist operator as a wildlife operator they are keen on value creation up to 87% they are right they they re, they already know that they are delivering a wildlife experience but they are really keen on developing that one up to 87% in terms of value creation value de- delivery 79% uh, they are expecting to re- redevelop it and uh, they tr- they willing to accept the drivers uh, to do those three up to 42% you have so based on, based on all these findings this is the model that we have developed well because of the limited time i'm not having uh, enough uh, like i don't have enough time to explain the model that we have developed however mm-hmm. this is the model that we have developed uh, which is uh, the recognizable or the recommended model that the two operators in sri lankan context could follow however if i summarize you what we have uh, recommended through this business model for the economic sustainability is strategic intention strategic intention in the sense we have suggested them to differentiate their offering uh, while focusing about the value creation value delivery uh, and value drivers and through value captures if you going to ask from me what are the recommendations that we have given for the model i mean now we had a problem the problem was the wildlife operators were running out of the economic sustainability so we have gathered the data set it says very clearly that they are very keen but they don't know how to do it so we have we provide the recommendations based on the findings and the theoretical underpinning well these are the recommendation that we have given for them we have recommended them to recreate their activities their values their leadership their network their co- collaboration and when it comes to capturing part we have given the recommendation for the financial and non financial aspects 
we have given them the recommendation in order to capture new new uh, niche type of segments and so on so if i summarize you the huge implication that they could gain from the recommended model that they have we have provided for the min area park basically they will be able to mini minimize the illegal activities they will be getting more tourists they will be gain their competitive status they will be gaining the social and environmental sustainability that they are losing right now and ultimately economic sustainability economic sustainability in the sense long term revenue while staying in the business so that is the conclusion that i could give uh, based on the findings and the research however it is recommended to apply the recommended model to the other national parks in sri lanka to check whether the application part of this recommended model in the other context as well however we'll be carrying on and moving forward with the future research studies with this recommended model and uh, that's going to be the end of my small and very brief presentation and i would like to thank all the organization organizers in this conference especially your professors in your university and my colleagues uh, who is the professor noel and sara garden and dr renuka thank you thank you very much all right uh, thank you very much uh, dr madura for your presentation uh, any question for dr madura regarding his presentation uh dr madura if i may ask is the uh, national park is run by private company or by the government Doctor, well, in Sri Lanka, we don't have the permission to run uh, privately owned national parks. It's all uh, government yeah, owned, uh, government reserved areas. Yes, I see. So uh, basically, the tourists that comes to that national parks are international tourists. Well, yes, uh, doctor, because uh, the 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 attention for the domestic tourists in Sri Lanka is very low. Be, uh, the, 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 if I take, uh, if I give you a summarized version, well, eighty percent of the visitors are the foreigners. for the national parks in sri lanka that is why the, the that's that is the key reason why we have done this research because nowadays after the 2019 we don't have tourists in the country yeah so true. all the operators are losing the economic sustainability because they haven't paid the attention for the domestics yeah true true because all the borders are closed because you are concentrating more on the international tourists and yes yes yes, yes. true Yes. That's what happened to some of the destination where more concentration on international tourists yeah. and it affected them yeah. a lot during the pandemic. True. Yeah. Yeah. This, you you should uh, encourage domestic tourist tourism. Yes. To yes. That's what we are doing. Park. Yes. That's what we have recommended, and that's what the Professor Noel and myself is working toward, providing the knowledge. Yes. yes. Yeah. So, do you think that the recommended model will be followed? well well since the, the the most interesting part is now they don't have the revenue right now they don't mm -hmm. have any other income model they were they were losing the the economic sustainability since 2019 in april because we had a terrorist attack in 2019 in yeah. april and they are thereafter we don't experience the international travelers now it's almost two years so they don't have revenue at all so whatever the suggested model which is mm -hmm. tested and proven with the results is the only option that they have right now to secure their life food yeah i think it's true yeah okay any any more question uh, for dr madura um i have one question yeah dr yeah. madura allow me yeah uh, my name is yeah. jana from utm kudai johor So um, I see that your topic is very interesting. So I didn't show my face in the 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 uh, the um, Google Meet. Uh, okay, my um, uh, it's just that I, I just want to know um, your study. Is it a collaborative study with uh, Australia itself? Because I see that your courses is uh, a prof novel course from Australia. So I just want to know: uh, is it a collaborative study with the Sri Lanka itself uh, from the uh, from the Australia? Uh, thank you, Diana. Thank you. Well, uh, yeah, thank, you. Uh, thank you for the question. Well, uh, it is a collaboration between uh, my, myself and Professor Noel. Well, we don't have the university collaboration. These are self-funded uh, projects that we have done during the lockdown period, because we were at home 
and uh, we these were self funded uh, research activities so answering to your question well we don't have a university collaboration but we all are working for the australian universities so when it comes to the real time publication of the articles we might be thinking of uh, getting the uh, the university uh, the approval to publish this but these are self funded research activities that we have done uh, diana mm. that's good yeah it's a great effort uh, from dr madura i hope that uh, you will be successful thank you thank you dr the model thank, yes. you. thank you all right Okay, uh, I think we come to the end of our session. Thank you to all of our presenters for sharing their presentation today. I hope that those who have attended the uh, presentation today or the session today learn something from all those presentation. Before we wrap up the today's session, I, I would like to open to the floor. Maybe you have any question regarding what has been presented for the last uh, round. Yeah, you may ask directly or type in the chat box. Um, if not, yeah, we conclude this session. Thank you once again Doctor, to all the presenters. Doctor, it was a uh, great pleasure. Yeah. Doctor, Sorry. before we end our session, yeah. can all the participants and audience oh, yes. open their video? Yeah, turn the turn camera, on your camera on for a photo session. Yes, yes, I forgot that. Okay. Uh, Maybe you can uh, turn on your camera for a photo session. Thank you. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, thank you all. Okay, thank you. As we concluded the session, thank you once again to all the presenters and also uh, the attendees for this session. Pleasure to have all of you today presenting our topic as well as those attending the session. Look forward to more similar session in the future. Till then, take care and stay safe, everyone. Thank you. Okay, thank you, thank everyone. You. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank, thank you. you. Syakir, nanti ada tak uh, nombor kontak Dr. Madura tu? Tak, nanti email, saya nak tanya organizer kot. Email ke kan? Nanti uh -huh. ya. Ya? Yeah? Okay, yeah, saya